Vigia. Guardião. Sentinela. Todo grupo de suricates tem sempre um vigia. Enquanto os outros estão procurando comida, um fica no ponto mais alto possível e vigia o horizonte. Uma máquina feita para vigiar. A cauda longa cria um tripé para descansar. Manchas escuras em volta dos olhos reduzem o brilho do sol. Uma membrana transparente mantém a poeira longe. E dentro, uma visão panorâmica do deserto. Ele está procurando anomalias em um cenário que conhece melhor que qualquer um. Uma sombra que se move mais rápido do que deveria, uma pedra, uma zebra ou algo mais perigoso. Assim que avista uma possível ameaça, ele soa o alarme. Um sinal para os outros buscarem abrigo. Crise evitada, graças ao vigia. Quando lidamos com ameaças, nós também dependemos de vigias. No escuro, no oceano, nas montanhas. Sempre houve vigias para proteger os outros. Mas quem vigia as ameaças que espreitam online, onde não é possível ver, ouvir ou sentir o cheiro? Felizmente, há vigias ali também. Aqueles que olham o horizonte em busca de algo que se mova. Quando seu trabalho é manter bilhões de pessoas seguras online, você precisa respirar a internet assim como os invasores. Porque a única forma de parar um invasor é pensando como ele. Este é Shane Huntley. Antes de trabalhar no Google, Shane trabalhava em um ambiente profissional bem diferente. Como um especialista em inteligência, veio parar no Google. Ao contrário de muitas histórias de origem profissional, esta começa nas férias. Foi nos anos 2010. Eu estava backpacking na Índia na época. And I was at this internet cafe and I pulled up the news and there's all these articles about something called Operation Aurora. I was like, wow, like I was in the government and we knew all this stuff was going on, but none of the victims were ever willing to talk about it before this time. Enquanto isso, a 12 mil quilômetros dali, em reação à Operação Aurora, mudanças sísmicas estavam acontecendo no modo como o Google lidava com a segurança. Novas tecnologias, novas arquiteturas de rede, novos padrões do setor, novas camisetas, novos mousepads. Mas o mais importante, novas contratações. As a security engineer at the time, if you were not working for a government or a contractor for a government, you might have never been exposed to these kinds of sophisticated attacks. We realized that we needed to create specialty teams to do specialty parts of the job, including a group who studies these hackers full time, nation state adversaries in particular, to prevent attackers like that from being successful. O que explica por que um especialista de férias na Índia recebeu uma mensagem assim. Hey Shane, I'm starting this new team at Google. Do you want to move to California and do that? And soon after, I was coming over to start this threat analysis group and haven't looked back. The primary job of threat analysis is to understand the attacker so we can counter them and we can protect our users from them. We're dark wizard catchers. There's a lot of people on the internet that are trying to do bad things. It's our job to stop them. By understanding who those attackers are and how they operate, we're able to apply that information to stop attacks. So today we track, you know, over 270 different threat actors around the globe. These are government-backed threats, but also financially motivated threats, which is cybercrime, ransomware, and we also track disinformation threats. 
coordinated groups trying to run disinformation campaigns for malicious ends. O grupo de análise de ameaças é geralmente chamado pelo acrônimo TAG. O apelido é apropriado, já que o TAG caça e marca as ameaças e suas respectivas técnicas. Assim, equipes de segurança em todo o Google e além dele podem gerar defesas e respostas antes mesmo de um ataque acontecer. Essa inteligência ajudou a evitar que ameaças apareçam no seu e-mail pessoal e ajudou a proteger os segredos comerciais das empresas da lista Fortune 500. Ela ajudou a rastrear a origem de um super vírus e ajudou a proteger organizações desde grupos de canastra locais até campanhas nacionais. O TAG não teve sempre o impacto que tem hoje, mas todos têm que começar de algum lugar. I managed to join Google the week after the very last thing of Aurora. There was like hundreds of people there weeks before to work through the Aurora attack. But when I started, there were only like 10 of us in the building. And I'm turning up all like, you know, bright-eyed, having gone through my Google training, like, okay, what are we going to do? How many pieces of malware do we have? Five. Okay. How many threat groups do we know about? One. Okay. So, Greenfields, we were somewhat starting from scratch. A equipe trabalhou com o que tinha. Eles analisaram, caçaram, contrataram novos especialistas, como o Tony aqui. Yep. Eles criaram dossiês sobre ameaças e relatórios sobre estratégias. Mas a maior força da equipe não veio de novas tecnologias, mas de algo em que o Google trabalhou desde o início. We have, surprise, surprise, a really great search engine software. Para executar o mecanismo de pesquisa, o Google faz o download de toda a internet acessível ao público nos data centers. As partes boas e as partes ruins. Depois, sites perigosos e conteúdos nocivos são sinalizados antes de alcançar sua página de resultados. Mas isso não os torna inúteis. Esse conteúdo é exatamente o que a equipe do TAG procura. The things that need to be blocked. Exploits. Software that needs to be fixed. Phishing messages. Almost every piece of malicious software that exists anywhere on the internet. We can see what they do when they run. We can like look at what's inside them. This is something which would, for anyone else, like I don't know how they build it or it would take decades, but for us, it's sort of just lying around in the search team and we're able to use that sort of scale and technology for our mission as well. So one of the things that we do in TAG is we actually take a copy of the search engine software and we feed in every piece of malicious software that we've run across on the internet and then we index it. So we have our own version of Google search just for searching through malicious software. And this is valuable because even when attackers try very hard to evade, there's always some signatures of what they're doing and some ability to link things together. And a great example is what we did with a piece of ransomware called WannaCry. The WannaCry attack is running rampant. Malware WannaCry. 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 A ransomware has been around for a long time, but WannaCry is different. WannaCry foi o maior ataque de ransomware da história. É um tipo de ataque abrangente em que os hackers fazem o computador da vítima de refém. Em um único dia, o WannaCry infectou mais de 200 mil computadores em 150 países, afetando grandes instituições como bancos, universidades e até paralisando o Serviço Nacional de Saúde britânico. It was being sent out everywhere. It was causing all of this damage, but nobody knew who was behind it. Assim como uma pesquisa reversa de imagens para ver de onde veio uma foto, a equipe colocou o malware no mecanismo de pesquisa. Because we'd run these billions of pieces of software and looked at them all, we could really drill down and find what's related, depending on how it behaves, what accounts they're using to set up, to upload. There's all these details down to the, like, the lowest level of specifically how this one snippet of code is being used. By looking at those details, we were able to find that one link that was able to determine that it wasn't somebody just trying to steal money. It was the North Korean government. After careful investigation, the United States is publicly attributing the massive WannaCry cyber attack to North Korea. We do not make this allegation lightly. We do so with evidence and we do so with partners. We used to think about intelligence services or country versus country, but now often we actually see country versus individual or country versus company. We certainly want to defend against Google itself getting hacked. What we really see that's much more common is attackers coming after our users. Day to day, we are trying to be the people that stand between the attackers and you to keep you safe. 
Monitorar adversários é uma parte importante da missão do TAG. Mas o mais importante é aprender com essas ameaças para criar defesas melhores, algo que a Camille Stewart Gloucester sabe bem. Por três anos, ela garantiu que os produtos do Google ficassem à frente das ameaças. All of the work happening across the various Google security teams directly supports safer Google products. The intelligence that Tag sends to different products allows them to be more resilient. So it's not just about the whack-a-mole of stopping an individual campaign. It's being able to turn around to Gmail, Chrome, or YouTube, or Google Drive, and say, hey, if we address this, we can eliminate an entire class of attacks and protect all these users. Com o que a equipe lida exatamente? Com as técnicas que invasores usam para atacar os produtos do Google e seus usuários. Yeah, so there's so many different ways to try and get around our defenses. One of the most common that we see is phishing. Well, now take down your phishing pole and meet me at the vision hole. We may not get a bite all day, but don't you rush away. Phishing é o tipo de ataque em que o invasor envia e-mails, mensagens ou faz ligações para fazer com que você clique em um link malicioso ou forneça informações de identificação pessoal, senhas ou números de cartões de crédito. É um tipo de ataque que muitos de nós conhecemos bem. Attackers are going to prey on whatever they think people will click on. Um, so whether that's threats, money, a salacious bit of gossip. Fear is a big one. So when the pandemic started, we saw a huge uptick in targeting around COVID-19. As citizens, we were all looking for information and likely ready to consume anything that might provide some clarity. Essa se tornou a zona de ataque ideal. Usar o medo e a confusão das pessoas sobre a pandemia para capturar cliques. Usando detalhes falsos para conseguir informações pessoais e criar desinformação sobre vacinas e tratamentos. There's a lot of money to be made, so you have this explosion driven by criminal motivations. How do we protect users from the scope and the scale of these types of attacks? And a huge part of it is making sure it never makes it to your inbox. O código do Gmail tem filtros criados para bloquear mais de 100 mensagens maliciosas por segundo. If Google wasn't catching all of that malicious activity, the spam, phishing and malware, your inbox would essentially be a field of landmines. Essa seleção é realizada por uma rede de filtros inteligentes que evoluem e se reorientam com base nas ameaças do dia. They not only block things, but they learn from everything they block. They are leveraging the intelligence from the tag team to pull from your inbox 99.9% of the threats. I think what keeps me up at night is just what's at stake for some people. You know, Gmail has over a billion users. We have to secure everyone. And certainly, there are people who have a bigger risk profile than most. That's politicians, that's other government employees, that's journalists, civil society. All these people are targets that we have to protect. Na maioria dos casos, a primeira etapa para se proteger é saber que você é um alvo em potencial. We actually tell every single user that's targeted by a government-backed threat. We put a big warning at the top of their Gmail or other service to let them know that. We've stopped this type of attempt. We blocked it, but we want you to know that this is happening. Some people think this would be really rare, but actually, like over the course of a year, we actually warn around 36,000 different users that they're targeted by some government or another. Talvez a maior concentração de alvos de nações estrangeiras nos Estados Unidos esteja no governo. Pode perguntar ao Michael Kaiser. Ele é o diretor do Defending Digital Campaigns, um grupo dedicado a fornecer recursos de segurança cibernética a oficiais do governo nacionalmente. There are folks in this world who would not like to see democracy succeed. Bad actors who are trying to influence an outcome or make the process look less legitimate and campaigns would be a target of those people. We don't run any election infrastructure. We don't build software for voting machines. But we do have candidates and political figures that use our services such as Gmail, they use our phones. And we do see that there are hostile actors that are trying to 
interfere with the political system of not just US elections, but elections worldwide. One of the things that's so difficult about this is that political campaigns in a lot of ways are a pickup game. So who is part of a campaign? Well, you have staffers, you probably have volunteers, you have the candidate, and then you have people like the candidate's family, close friends, confidants. All these people are connected to the campaign. We believe that anyone associated with a campaign is at higher risk. Even if I'm an intern, if they can compromise my account, that gives the attacker a foothold into the campaign's network. It's not enough to sort of draw a fence around the people that you see on the front page of the newspaper. The reality is you have to secure everyone. Depois de anos nesse ramo, o Google aprendeu algumas coisas sobre como proteger grandes grupos de pessoas e usou esses aprendizados para criar o programa Proteção Avançada. Advanced Protection Program is open to any user. It's very similar to what Google does with its own employees, and it works. Basically, what it requires is two-factor authentication. That makes your account a lot more secure because it means that an attacker, even if they've managed to figure out your password, they can't get into your account. If you have two-factor authentication, your account pretty much becomes unfishable. It tremendously cuts down on the amount of risk from all of these corners of the internet. Protecting the democratic system is a fundamental thing that keeps me enthused about my job and makes me proud of what we do in our team. This is some of our most high priority work and something that we really take very seriously. Os problemas que o TAG monitora podem parecer exagerados. Nós temos problemas suficientes sem ter que pensar em nações estrangeiras e criminosos cibernéticos observando nossas contas. Over the last decade, the actors have got a lot better about what they do. And they've had to, right? Because of teams like TAG, we haven't made their life easy. And this is valuable because the more effort they have to expend, the safer the users are. Cada inovação criada com os insights do TAG faz com que os ataques fiquem mais caros. Então, embora haja novos invasores entrando no jogo a todo momento, os recursos necessários para alcançar os usuários muitas vezes estão fora do alcance deles. I'm in this battle not because I believe we'll lose. I'm in this battle because I believe we can win. We may not win 100% of the time, but we can make a lot more people a lot more secure and prevent a lot of attacks. That's what we're here for, is to take that weight off of our users' shoulders. We want you to use two-factor authentication and not click on suspicious links. Leave the rest to us. <laughs> We're a lot like the 911 system, a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week force against whatever it is that we're facing. Right now, there are thousands of attacks being launched against Google. We started seeing North Korea targeting security researchers, fake social media profiles. One of the last people you want having their hands on this kind of information is the North Korean government. We might have to burn it all down and start from scratch. I love it. <laughs> 